Grand Rising, my friends. Hey there to the most beautiful subscribers on most planes of known existence and reality. I mean, just gorgeous individuals. If you're new here, welcome. Join us. Pull up, pull up a chair. Subscribe. Hey, you know, hey, it doesn't hurt. Great googly muggly the market cat down to 1.7. I haven't seen that yet. I know it was. I know Bitcoin was down to thirty six thousand, but that one point seven. Now look, I remember when we was at like the market cap a couple years back. I remember you know before it was a hundred billion, when it was like you know hovering around two hundred billion for the longest. So you know whatever, it's all relative. Market took a, a beating today, as you can see. Down Bitcoin down fifteen percent over seven days, eight percent today alone. Ethereum down 20%. So is this the bottom? Who knows? Don't catch a falling knife. None of what I say is ever financial advice or spiritual advice, medical advice, or anything of any shape, form, or fashion. This is just you listening to me. I am not your advisor. And you can't eat me either. I'm not your advisor. Uh, so, but don't catch a falling knife, meaning you don't wait to it. It goes down and you start to see it go back up. Like, you know, looking at this, I can say once Bitcoin reached 40,000, if anything else you liked was on sale, go for that. That could, you know, that's one way to think of it. But, you know, it may be other numbers you may look at and think about. So for me, just keep an eye Bitcoin, 36,522 bucks right now. Ethereum, $2,602. Binance coin at $387, Cardano at a dollar fifteen, Solana at 112. Man, everything is on sale. That's what I see. XRP 64 cents, Terra 65, Polka dot 19, Doge 14 cents, Avalanche $66, Shiba Inu 40s 22 41. Man, everything is on sale. Near is down 33% for the for the week, down to $13. Everything is on sale. So if you had, if none of this is financial advice, you had some money in cash, which you always should have some in cash, get ready because there's going to be some great sales. And then when things start to go up and you take profits, that's what you have in cash. And then for me, I'm using a lot of some of my cash in my crypto cash in the anchor protocol where it's still the same. And I'm still getting my APR on it. So. But also the stock market is down. Now, what's causing all this? I'll give a little bit of my pontif pontification before we start, you know, our normal stories for the day in a second. So, but the stock market is down as well. You can see everything. The only bright spot was Peloton. Uh, this is probably after hours because they were down so much earlier. They 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 overshot so much. And a lot of everything is oversold. So you know it's going to be a lot of money that's ready to pour into the market. But I'll give. Let's get into it. Well, um, here you know we bought that positivity. And what is positivity? You may ask. Positivity is saying someone has molded and shaped me to be a better person. Someone to jump out there and be able to take advantage of all this knowledge that I'm gaining and to be a better person. Now, how can I repay them? Well, I'm on this. Coco here is um, making noise. She wants to go hang out with me. And she knows. And uh, he's busy. And you go chill and listen. You hear me? You hear me? Say what's up. Give a little thrill or trouble or something. Now go. Now be quiet when you're in noise. Um. So what's going on? People think we're going to war. Not we going to war. Sorry. People think the world is going to see a war between Russia and the Ukraine, and not the Ukraine and Ukraine. So. I think a lot of people, the big money is getting scared. They're pulling their money back to see kind of what happens, if that happens, when that happens. Um, a lot of the drumbeat is there for it. 
and a lot of the there was a cyber attack in the Ukraine the other day that kind of was a prep. A lot of the rhetoric from uh, Vladimir Putin and his, you know, government has been very sounding like they want to go to war and prepare the Russian people for war. So that may be. I think that's what's kind of shaking the markets a lot. So just keep an eye on that and that will kind of guide what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks and maybe even um, months. So with that. So in today's stories, 50 percent of global financial transactions might involve Ethereum in 10 years. Hedge fund says this uh, guy, Joey Krug, chief co-chief investment officer of cryptocurrency center hedge fund pantera pantera capital of course said ethereum has prospects to become an integral player in the global financial system saying that they predict in, in several years time that 10 years in this but probably somewhere in between that with all of the transactions in the world of money that 50 percent of them would somehow touch into the ethereum blockchain even going to even you know according to this article even with the co competition from other layer one solutions such as avalanche phantom you know or even layer twos like arbitrum optimistic zk sync roll up so believes that once ethereum migrates to the proof of stake protocol the platform might act as a base for competitors to set up their projects so far the problem has been of course he said transaction fees but seeing it's been a lot of um still business on the ethereum blockchain so could you see ethereum be involved in 50 percent of international or global financial transactions and how much you think that would do for the price of ethereum so in these days where you see the price drop down here all of this stuff we go look back at this and you know when it's over a, 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 a decimal place when you know these are all over a decimal place we will look back on these like man i i, I should have this and that then jp morgan shares predictions on crypto markets ethereum's upgrades DeFi, and nfts global investment bank jp morgan has published a report on the future outlook of crypto markets including ethereum upgrades decentralized finance and non-fungible tokens the bank sees the cryptocurrency markets as increasingly relevant to financial services. So, what do you think? The application from crypto have only just begun. Web 3.0, greater use of NFTs, tokenizations are in the line of sight for 2020. And here what they said is that DeFi was a bit of a flop in 2021. You're right. But still has strong potential in 2000. In 22 and beyond so they you know for all of the people made a lot of in DeFi, they still thinking that was a flop imagine what it could be like if that wasn't a flop so jp morgan is looking to lean into it um furthermore jp morgan analysts noted that these projects attached to tokens and coinbase being a lead exchange of buy and sell tokens we've seen coinbase as a leading direct beneficiary of crypto growth uh crypto market growth so Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on when they feel here. They said that if 2021 was the year of non fungible tokens, NFTs, then 2022 may be the year of the blockchain bridge driving greater interoperability of various chains or the year of financial tokenization. So JP Morgan is going to lead into chase which you know of course jamie dime years ago said that he would fire any of his employees who bought cryptocurrencies and they were worthless and i was reading an article that i didn't even pull it but just to say that with warren buffett um his partner charlie munger where he always talking about well, bitcoin, bitcoin is rat poison square <laughs> you know now you know look be 90 and a billionaire i wouldn't trade it anything any all the money in the world right now but to go through my life course to be that point um but they were saying oh well you know he was doing that to protect he wanted to protect the casual investor but to his friends he would maybe uh, 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 
advised them differently regarding the cryptocurrency. I was like, get out of here, man. Y'all some, of course. And that's what's going to drive a lot of people crazy. Years from now, when all these people who made, not you necessarily if you're watching this, but you, you, you see what I'm talking about. Individuals who have been demeaning cryptocurrencies, trying to make other people feel you stupid for when they get involved in it and all of that. Years from now, when it's worth way, way, way more than all of this whole market is worth more. And all of us are super rich from it. Wealthy, even. The people who didn't get it, they go look back and be like, well, but, but, but y'all said it was stupid. But, but, but y'all said it was stupid. <laughs> Bomblet dropping drones are now being used by cartels in Mexico's drug war. You see, I just went on because I don't believe in dealing with that. Extraordinary video footage. And we go watch the video footage. I'm a, matter of fact, let's just watch it and I tell you about what my thoughts is. Let's go. So you're going to see the drone is up. This is the camera from the drone showing. Now, these are bombs dropping that look like almost like what they look like. What are those things called? Um, uh, um, shuttlecocks from a from like a Batman game. I'm going to rewind that a little bit. Now, we're looking. This is the drone. So I'm going to pause this. this, this, this we got to you can understand what we're looking at here. Some rival, I guess these are rival cartels or people who don't like each other. But this is somewhere in South America. I'll, look and we'll go through the article in a second. Where one group has a drone with a camera on it dropping bomblets on their enemies. And this is the footage of it. This is what we're watching. There's people running away. You see the people running away down there. And they're dropping bombs on their, you know, on their production, on their operation, what they're doing out there in the jungle. Probably what they cope, they cope processing. They bomb they plant. This is what's going the war that's going on now between the cartels. Extraordinary drone footage has in Mexico has emerged reportedly showing a bomblet dropping drone being used by one of Mexico's increasingly well armed drug cartels to attack one of its enemies. While we have reportedly previously about the groups using small quadcopter style suicide drones, this now looks like a bomber. The video is filmed from the drone's own camera with the drone hovering over an enemy camp. Several small munitions are seen being dropped through the trees while multiple people run below for their own protection. Below, targeted below, run for their own protection. And then they also said there's another part of the video where the drone looked like it was crashed and it may have possibly been shot down. But I, that is one of the fears of all of this technology is some of the dark side of it is that what if you have a drone or artificial intelligence that's keyed in on your voice to target and fly through wherever a window wall to kill you specifically <laughs> your your biometric signature whatever that you know and, and come after so we have to be cautious in our use of these Technologies and understand that this is how it's going to be co opted and used for, you know, not the best purposes. Some would even say nefarious, but we have to be better than this. This is not how we're going to evolve as into a intergalactic, intergalactic, intergalactic species. You know, I mean, maybe it could be warlike. You look, you know, go back to Marvel comics. Think about the Kree and the skull and. The, the Shi'ar and the, the, the Badun and, you know, okay. There's some warlike species, but I thought that was just more science fiction. Not You think on that higher level of a, on a, a Kardashian scale, we talked about the different galactic civilizations that, that destruction of others would be, you know, maybe protection and knowing you go in a place where there's going to be violence and stuff, but that just... You know, dropping bomblets on your enemies, coke producing facilities. Maybe we not we will be a little bit past that point, but hey, look what we're doing at the higher levels of, on this world. Blinking, I think that's how you pronounce the name. I, I don't know if I've even heard in the interview said out loud. This dude is super quiet as the uh, Secretary of State. He just has his business. You don't see much about it. Says U.S. has raised mysterious illness with Russia that is a Conflicting diplomats speaking of the well, quote unquote Havana syndrome. So, you know, they go back and forth to saying they think 
you know, here he's saying that he brought it up with Russia that it is afflicted diplomats. And if they find out if someone, you know, we don't know who is responsible, that we did find out somebody is responsible, whoever that is, they're going to suffer severe consequences. They believe that when we just had this meeting over the past week about what's going on in the Ukraine, in Paris and Geneva, that some more American diplomats were reported ill. Uh, where we had security talks about the uh, Moscow's troop build up near the Ukrainian border. So here, Blinken said he's met with State Department employees around the world who described the illness, how it disrupted their lives. There is no doubt in my mind that people have been directly and powerfully infected because, you know, a lot of the. So, I mean, and it's just it's devious. Of course, someone has some type of new way of messing with people, you know, effing with people. We would say. And we have yet to figure out how exactly it's being done yet. But it's happening. And they're gaslighting us, you know, in our own media to say, no, nah, it's not really happening. They're crazy. They're crazy. They're crazy. And they said Havana because they thought it was only happening in Cuba. And they were like, oh, maybe it was these specific um, bugs that were making this sound and frequency. I was like, it's happening all around the world. Are those bugs everywhere that our uh, individuals are stationed, even in the United States? Get out of here. Whatever. So please, let's figure out what's, what's hurting our people. Let's stop it and let's bring righteous retribution to anyone who hurts. Well, you know, look, I know if anybody from a different country may listen to this, they want to, I feel, that's how I feel about people who, you know, serve this country and whatever they may be in public service, military, whatever it may be, even if it is just you, you work at um, the, the five below store as a cashier. If you work, you pay taxes, you do your due, due diligence, then you get protected. That's how I go down. With that said, I love you. You love you. God loves us, and that's all that matters.